It's that kind of day. What? Oh, let's the... try this again. Did I miss something? <laughs> no, I just, I just totally blanked. I almost said, I, I just, I almost said the wrong podcast name. I don't even know how. Welcome to the Half in the Bag Disc Golf Podcast, streaming to you as part of the Joe's Disc Golf Podcast Network. And here are your hosts, Ben, Joe, and RJ. Take two. Hello and welcome everyone to this episode of the Half in the Bag Disc Golf Podcast. My name is RJ, and today in Northeast Indiana, I am drinking a glass of Jameson on the Rocks. And I am joined by two co-hosts who have not played disc golf in a Velociraptor suit, right? I have not. Not yet. I leave the possibility open at any point in my life to do something stupid. Yeah. And, and, and who is that that's saying that. this now? Sure, I guess I'll go. Uh, Joe here hanging out in Northeast Indiana, drinking from a depressing looking White Sox uh, glass, one finger of Jack Daniel single barrel, neat. After drinking far too much of it yesterday Uh, was there only one finger left after yesterday well i did three fingers yesterday and then put some ice in it and then put another finger after that um yesterday was a rough day phrasing five five fingers right four fingers i did three fingers (laughs) Three. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of it, I was like, "I there are seven. There are seven here. Seven fingers. Yeah. Oh man. Well, yeah. I'm Ian. Back again this win. Wow. <clears throat> Words. This week, drinking uh, normal iced tea. Although nice. no one's gonna believe it. Yeah. Oh, man. I know you, and that's just how you talk. <laughs> it's when hey, I at become least you remember fluent. what podcast you're on. Yes. You know, Ian yeah. oh, is fluent in the diggerary. So. It's true. <laughs> that is the collection of all the words and phrases I have screwed up. Yep. <laughs> hey, you all know, right. you could just say what I say on my podcast and just say words are hard. They yeah, are. They are. <laughs> um, oh. But circling back to what I said. Have, have either of you any idea what I'm talking about when I say have not played disc golf in a Velociraptor suit? I have not. Dad. Ricky Wysocki? Yes. So if you didn't see it, Ricky Wysocki had this awesome dinosaur hat. <laughs> and nice. he also had it as a shirt. So me, I typed in the Google search because I love dinosaurs and I like disc golf and I like Ricky Wysocki. So... Hey, you know, a nice little Venn diagram has formed here of my interests. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I want this Ricky Wysocki dinosaur shirt. One of the results that came up was Ricky Wysocki playing disc golf in a Velociraptor suit. Huh. That is pretty awesome. He is known for his raptor legs. I I did not get very far into this because I was doing show prep. um, Slash... (laughs) debating or slash checking my budget to see if I could afford a, uh, a, a stocky bomb dinosaur shirt. Nice. Um, yes. Solid. They are a little Can bit more I expensive. Borrow, um, mix blow up dinosaur costume from like, I don't know how many, uh, Halloween's ago. <laughs> oh, man. So, I, uh, I would pay good money to see that. I know. What I'm hearing is channel that idea. <laughs> yes, channel idea. What, what you're witnessing right now is a live brainstorming session. <laughs> I've so got a here's blow up uh, the... Stay Puff Marshmallow Man costume. Yeah, I can come that. We can. Oh, it I could be, be one match, of those like big uh, sumo suit things. Doubles. Yes. Or, or better yet, we get Ben in on this too, and we play scramble. Oh, just four God. person scramble. Uh, we'll just have to make sure that we bring uh, a proper amount of alcohol to that and probably play the courses right next to you, Joe. Um, because I think that's the only one that we would have a shot at not scoring 10 plus on and or losing discs. 
the one at the church? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I mean, the technically, hole. it's illegal to drink at all the parks here because they're city and state property, as far as I know. Correct. I or, say technically because, you know. <laughs> when has that ever stopped anyone? <laughs> exactly. Or we, we go over to the Mills Experience. Private course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. There you go. Play it blind, I've never played that drunk, before. and in random dinosaur blow up suits. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Let's make it a glow Zero round too. Oh my gosh! <laughs> we, so, so what I'm hearing is that you need to reach out to Chad and get this uh, get this organized. Yes, the mills. I feel, like, I feel like he would be in on this. He's asked me. He's like, hey, you know you know, come out on this day at this time. And I'm like, I have work or I'm out of town or. When you get one of those invites, can you bring me along too? If I could even make it sure. (laughs) That's, that's the bigger issue is that like, he's like, Hey, we're doing this thing. I was like, Hey, that's the one weekend I'm going back to Chicago to visit my parents. Yeah. That's the one weekend we're hosting softball tournament. That's, you know, of course, you know, it's a JV yep. softball tournament, too, right? Uh, Yeah, probably. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Anyway, uh, moving on quickly. Yes. So if you want to see us uh, do Stupid random things. shenanigans like that, um, stay tuned to the channel because it sounds like that might actually be a thing. Question mark. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm down. Better than zero chance. Yes. Yes. Um, but if you want to follow us on social media, you can follow this podcast, Half in the Bag DG, at Half in the Bag DG on Twitter. Uh, yep. If you are watching this, you can find the audio version wherever you get your major podcasts. And if you're listening to this and want to see the hilarity that is um, our faces slash ugliness that is my face, I won't lump Man. you guys in there. I'll let you speak for yourselves. Or the signs I change up every now and then. At That's least true. the top one. Top one Mess says, riff. I'd give up beer, but I'm not a quitter. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, I think it's a Michael Jordan quote that's something along the lines of, you quit once, it becomes a habit, so never quit. Exactly. I think I paraphrased that a little bit, and I'm not sure that's what he was talking about. But hey, you know, maybe he was talking about gambling. To quote, and fire truck of lawyers. <laughs> to quote Michael Scott, Quoting Michael Jordan, quoting Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So time to do a shot. (laughs) Anyway, so if they want to find Joe and his channel on social media, where can they do that, Joe? Instagram and Twitter at Joe's Disc Golf. Joe'sDiscGolf.com, which I'm a little slow to update. But, uh, you know, that's a thing. YouTube, Joe's Disc Golf, because I'm keeping it simple. And you can also find cool merch like the sweatshirt I'm wearing on the front here. It says Joe's Disc Golf and on the back it has the Joe's Disc Golf logo. It is a Gildan sweatshirt and it is super comfy. It is joesdiscgolf.com slash shop. And podcast on all the major podcasting sites. Plus, if you go to joesdiscgolf.com and click on podcast, you could just listen to it on the web through iTunes, I think. And I did set it up. I did set it up for the Half in the Bag Disc Golf podcast or halfinthebagdg.com. If you go to the podcast tab, same deal. But, Mm -hmm. you know, the Half in the Bag Mm -hmm. podcast, not the Joe's Disc Golf podcast. Yes, yes. Um... (laughs) Much less sober, much less intelligent. Yeah. Oh. And and Ian, where where can they find you on the socials? If you uh, go to Twitter, it's at Pop Refresh, P O P R Fresh, and then I do video game streaming on Twitch over at Twitch TV slash Pop Refresh. That's keeping it that's simple. It. I'm I'm super cool. Mm hmm. That kiss principle. Keep it simple, yep. stupid. Yep. Got it. Got to keep it simple. Yep. We're we're uh, short attention span creatures. Oh, yeah. at least I am. Ooh, what's that? 
I have a toddler. There's no attention span. <laughs> I have a seven uh, month old and she's almost crawling. It I have is, a dog. It is a launch right now. She'll get up and then she'll get on all fours and just kind of launch forward and face plant and then yeah. pop back up and launch again. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty quick. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh i'm really happy that there's not whiskey on my, on my uh, wife's computer now <laughs> I, I felt that coming <laughs> yeah now does she do the full full face plant or is it a uh more of like a seal to get this the like Ugh. uh 50 50 nice if she gets tired it's a full out face plant if she's <laughs> not quite so tired then she kind of like you know, upward facing dog. <laughs> yeah, a little seal action. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just give her a fish treat. She'll be fine. <laughs> she really likes to play with strings, so she's been hanging out with the cat way too much. Nice. Yeah, that sounds about right. The, the cat's like, I will kill the child soon. Pretty much. Excellent. Pretty much. <laughs> cat um. ring bell. I got a treat. <laughs> <laughs> so back to back to this golf. Yes, yes. yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about something that we did show on our social media. Um, we've been talking a lot about the match play event that's been going on in our local club. Yep. And Joe, you made it to the semifinals. Final four and for the second year in a row. Yep. You just you you lost in a heartbreaker and extras. We're yep. super proud of you, though. I mean, you did awesome. You know, you, holes uh, eight and nine at Tillman Park from the Reds just have my number because that's how I lost it last time. I uh, ended up in a playoff and lost, but I went way more holes in that uh, first year. This year, not so much because I shanky doodle dandied that drive. Uh, we've all been there. We've all yeah. been there. But hey, you know, you played awesome. Yep. Um, it was know, good. I, it was fun. I, I've I've heard a lot of feedback from the commentary group and and you know a lot of people yep. in the club that you know were you know thought that you did awesome and everything. So hey, my know, we're, goal we're super proud of you. My goal was to get my face as the watermark for the bracket next year, and looks like that's happening. <laughs> yes, <laughs> call that a win. Oh, man. Yes, now, yes, I do have one thought. Yes. Could you describe, for those of us who have no idea what holes eight and nine layout is, like what is the difficulty for you? Spe- wow, specifically. Specifically. Words. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is no specific reason. Um, eight is a decently tight gap a 400 foot dog leg left because it was in the a position um okay i kind of actually missed my line a little bit took the sneaky inside route and basically had it parked and i didn't get a good grip on my putter for an upshot and it just kind of fell out of my hand Mm -hmm. nine the first time through i ended up throwing a great drive and I skipped over the wood barrier into the creek out of bounds. Oh, no. This year, I had an early release and was yeah. in the honeysuckle. Yeah. And then I threw my section shot and hit the only skinny tree I needed to beat, and I would have parked that hole. And then I had a spit out. Okay. Yep. 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 And, uh, I, I, I just wasn't sure if they were sure. like really technically difficult holes or or what no more technically difficult than other holes i wouldn't say they're hole nine from the red tee is easy it's a it's like 410 feet but it's basically 200 foot layup 200 foot across the creek and then you're in the basket basically so it's it's just two upshots Going for it is pretty risky. So, yeah. No, I've I, gone for it a couple times and it's been like 50 50. 
Yeah. It Got seemed it. like it was just one of those holes that, um, it's just I forgot how my hands hole. work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. No, like I said, yep. it was, it was definitely a heartbreaker to watch. Um, oh yes. But, but you did awesome. And you know, it, it certainly was a, um, is, is the fly getting drunk, Joe? No cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the cat's getting drunk. So the cat, yes, yes. Yep. Um, so let's let's talk about the big disc golf event from the weekend. Sunday night league of Fort Wayne. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Well, so nope. let's hear it, Joe. Dynamic discs <laughs> open. Yes. Yes. Um. So this is your spoiler warning for DDO coverage. If you haven't watched your post-production, um, where have you been? Cause this comes out on Tuesday. Correct. That's on uh, you. <laughs> yes. Yes. So speaking of Sunday night league, let's talk about someone from the Fort Wayne area. Ish representing at DDO, getting himself on lead card. Yeah. Shout out to Elijah Bickle. Yeah. He's um, good. You know, yeah, he's real good. He got himself on lead card uh, day two of this tournament, uh, made the cut, which is not yep. something that all of the top pros can say. Correct. Uh, Big shout out to Ricky and Kristen Tatar for taking down the win. Yes, yes. The trilogy players taking down the DDO is inside job. Chris, Conspiracy. Is, Kristen's actually a latitude player, right? Yeah, but it's all trilogy. Right, right. I mean, it's all latitude plastic. And it's Matty O just... is West Side. Yeah, but Matty O had to go home. Um, yeah. For those of you that did not hear, he was one of a handful of players that ended up testing positive for COVID. Not a he whole just lot tried to, to say stay too than... positive. <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot to say about that other than, you know, we, we're obviously wishing them all a speedy recovery. Um, yeah, it seems like it was... Him, Tristan Tanner, Kona Panis, and Mason Ford are the ones I know of off the top of my head. Um, I What I had read was that Kona dropped out because Colton got tested positive. Colton oh, Montgomery. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why yep. I said Mason. Yeah, because Mason finished up. Yeah, he's, yeah, he finished fine. Yeah. Is it Mason and Valerie that are? Yes. A couple. Yep. So so what I'm hearing here is that uh, Trilogy is not only sucking up all of the plastic brands, but they're also trying to suck up all of the um, the couples. Uh, yeah, all of the couples. So it's Colton cheaper. Montgomery they only have to, to they only have to pay for one van, one RV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so uh, Colton Montgomery to Trilogy uh, in 2023 confirmed. Yeah. Yes. And Silver Lot to Trilogy confirmed? He, he might already be I can't remember off the top of my head. He's one of the <laughs> Europeans that I cannot remember. Yeah. M Macbeth to uh, Trilogy nope, confirmed? that's vinyl. Uh, anyway. Um, but obviously, like we said, we wish all of them a speedy recovery and you know, hopefully we'll see them again on tour soon. And hopefully that's this is one of the last times that we have to hear about it in regards to it affecting a disc golf tournament. I mean, to but be it honest, sounds like the it's the first time in a while that I've heard anything yeah. about it. Like even yeah. last year, they really didn't have many issues. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time and it affected a handful of players. It sounds like the health and safety protocols work perfectly for them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Silver Lot is already on Latitude 64. So silver lot to trilogy confirmed. Yep. A couple years ago, probably. <laughs> probably. So, so who yes, did sir. you say in the women took the win? Kristen Tatar. Oh, I may be looking at the wrong event page. Maybe. Saying it's uh, Haley King from last year. PDGA last year. Last year. It was last she year. took it down. I yep. typed in the right date. Damn you, <laughs> website. Yeah, well, so, final results won't 
technically be posted or confirmed until got it i mean a couple days from now so yeah so let's let's uh since Noted. while you look for the um 2022 results let's go through the fpo field uh so number one kristen's tar yep. the only player to finish the tournament even or better on the women's side yep uh, beating out Katrina Allen in an absolute nail biter. Uh, if you didn't see the last couple of holes, tune in probably 16, 15. 17, 18. Yeah, 15. I think 16 is the island. And, you know, they had a real good battle there. Um, Kat hit the band to avoid yeah. going to a playoff um, or to yep. miss going to a playoff. So that too. hats off to those two on a on a great battle. Uh, tied for third was Ella Hansen and Emily Beach. Yep. Fifth was Paige Pierce. Sixth, Haley King. Seventh, Valerie Mondahano. Tied for eighth was Macy Valadiaz, Madison Walker. And then tenth was Jen Allen. Yep. Um, some other big names that people would have heard of. Um, let's see. Natalie Ryan and Alexis Mondahano finished tied for 11th. Jessica Weiss and Rebecca Cox finished tied for 13th. Missy Gannon was 16th. Kat Merch tied for 17th. Holland Hanley tied for 19th. Maria Oliva, 23rd. And that's uh, going to be all the people that made the cut. That means, oh, my skip ace is going to be bad. <laughs> I had, I think, oh, what's her name? Kesteruda? Kester, I do not FPO. I'm not familiar with this person. She's been doing all right, and she didn't make the cut. Yeah, so those that fell outside the cut were 26th was Deanne Carey. Uh, tied for 28th was Holly Finley. Paige Shue was 33rd. Erica Stitchcomb, 34th. Yep. Um, so, oh, Melody. Melody. Castorita. Yeah. That looked second tough. to last, beating one person, not counting the three DNFs. Then for those of you screaming into your or into the void about where is Kona, she DNF'd, as we said, she dropped out due to health and safety protocols. Yep. Um Yikes. you know, I think the big story was obviously, you know, Kristen and Kat going back and forth. Like we said, if you haven't seen it. Just tune in for those last couple holes. Go go watch your what is that, GK? Uh yes. Hey, I think I always get those two confused because I think they're basically just the same thing. And they're not. Yes. That could not I be less which. confusing. That cannot be more confusing. That too. I cannot be something. Yes. Um but was there anyone else that you guys wanted to highlight from that part? Nope. Yeah. So, so um, just a, a really quick breakdown on that in case you haven't seen it. A uh, whole six, whole 16 is the Island hole, I believe. Yep. And Kristen airballs the birdie putt and it drops into the, it just hangs on to the last blade of grass she takes a par on it. Yep. Katrina hits chains, spits out, bounces out of bounds. It was, um, it was rough. Yeah, it was just watching it. Just just it was agonizingly slow. Um, and then um, and on I, I did not see anything on 17, but then on 18, like I said, cat hit the band. She was that close to, to forcing a playoff. It was feel bad for her, but at the same time, I mean, hats off to Kristen on, you know, winning back to back. And, you know, I think arguably putting a stake on being the number one player in the world right now for the women's mm -hmm. division. As it stands right now, um, my vote is Kristen Tatar player of the year. So far, she yeah. has been on the podium for every single tournament and won the last two in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the only hard part, the only knock against her is going to be 
she's going back to Estonia and playing the European tour now. This is her last tournament and coming back for Worlds. Yep. That would be the only knock against her. Yeah, but I mean, I I think we've seen her be, a, you know, really, really good. As long as she comes um, back and continues yes. to dominate. Yeah. And as long as she continues to play well on the European tour. Yeah, but um, they don't look at that. This is for the disc golf pro yeah. tour. Yeah, that's so true. That's true. That's, that's so, why I uh, say it's a knock against her, but not mm-hmm. like, I mean, yeah, as yeah. a technicality, essentially. Yes. Yes. So, so let's oh go ahead go ahead is is it more so the european tour isn't isn't considered as difficult or just that it's two separate entities it's two separate entities okay yep um from my novice perspective i would say yes (laughs) and that you don't you obviously don't have the big u.s player or you know the big u.s based players so you will have um the European Open is a major mm-hmm. and you'll have okay. a decent amount of the American players are planning to go over there. I'll s- okay. I say it that way because you just never know yeah. <laughs> yeah. at this rate. We're, we're another three week spike in yeah. uh, COVID from no being nobody being allowed to go anywhere. But yep, who knows? Um, so I think that's all that we have on the FPO side. Let's talk the MPO side, um, where I think it was kind of a one man story for most of the tournament. I think I would argue. Yeah. Uh, Brody Smith. He, he is actually one that I want to highlight. He played really, really well this weekend and was one of about 50 people who tied for third on the MPO side. I know, but Oh my gosh. By far his, this is his best, uh, pro tour finish ever yes yes so hats off to him uh you know he did did really really well mm-hmm. played really well um you know was on lead card at least day three and four was he also there on day two i do uh, not remember i don't think so round two. i don't think so either no he was yeah. he was tied for third but because the tiebreaker is your PDGA number, yes. it goes by lowest. And, you know, because of him being a relatively new player, he was yes. not up there. Yeah, somehow our local or our awesome local player got on lead card ahead of him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, huh. I think that's all we need to know about Brody is that he's just not as good as your local pros. <laughs> yeah obviously yep but it's a perfect takeaway clearly yes yes clearly uh but let's go through the top 10 here um so obviously as we mentioned we had ricky waisaki winning uh, apparently he was not playing in a dinosaur suit so that probably helped him a lot here lame um yeah although could you imagine throwing in those wins with a dinosaur with a blow-up dinosaur suit on I have a hard it's time a performance, just oh, performance go enhancing suit. Yes. <laughs> I have a hard time just imagining throwing in that wind. Uh, I know what I played yes. through in the last two days here, and it was a yeah. fraction of what they had. I mean, we yeah, didn't even well, have a tornado. Yeah. <laughs> they did. We did. Yes. You did? Almost. Um, well, I mean, Emporia, where they were, didn't have a tornado, but Kansas in the surrounding did. areas. Yeah. Hey, you know what? After this week, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. No, we're not. I don't know where they're going. I I don't know either, actually. So schedule that seems like an oversight on our part. Looking it up, they're going to Helsinki. <laughs> what? No, that's the yes. that's Kristen Tatar. <laughs> She'll be playing there. On yes. UDIS, they have the European tour and all that stuff. So uh, yes, the Helsinki yes. tournament is May 6th through the 8th, but the pro Ooh. tour is actually off until the Santa Cruz masters cup, which is a silver series Ooh. May 13th through the 15th. Ooh. Hmm. So next week they're all off. Yep. Yep. 
Interesting. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll have, have to come to up with stuff to talk about. Play with. <laughs> oh, gosh, I guess we're going to have to play that dinosaur suit round faster than we thought. Yep. Yep. Uh, Ian, so anyway. Mother's Day, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. Nothing at all. For all of you listening, Mother's Day is a week from today recording and five days from when this is published. So... <sighs> Get on that. Yeah, and, have fun uh, with that. Too knowledge. late for flowers. Yeah. 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 Amazon uh, so says anyway. my Mother's Day gift will show up probably before Mother's Day. Ooh. Eek. <laughs> yes. So buy them food. They like food. <laughs> yes. You can never go wrong with chocolates. Yeah. Reese's cups. Yeah. That's where it's at. That's where I went. Anyway, win. anyway, so back to disc golf. Uh, yes, back to disc golf and the uh, top European players. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon Lazat finished second. Is he really though? His fl- he has a German flag next to his name. But he's lived in Massachusetts for. Yes, I know a that decade? he is American. Is he an American citizen? I don't at know. This point? I actually don't know. Is we'll it like common law marriage? Next. You just live here long Ooh. enough? <laughs> um, so next, tied for third, was uh, half the field, including Vino Makala, Aaron mm-hmm. Gossage, mm-hmm. Logan Harpool, Jake Hebenheimer, and um, Broody Smith. Uh, tied for eighth was Chris Dickerson in GT Hancock. Then yep. tied for 10th was Calvin Heimberg, James Conrad, and Gannon Burr. Um, really quickly, some other names to highlight. Kyle Klein finished tied for 13th. Nathan Queen finished tied for 13th. Jeremy Colling getting a, an ace. Big jam. Look at yep. him. Uh, also tied for 13th. Thomas Gilbert, Chris Clemens, Kevin Jones, Bradley Williams, all tied for 17th. Mason Ford tied for 21st, along with Nate Sexton. Yep. Uh, Drew Gibson tied for 26th. Greg Barsby tied for 26th. Ezra Aderhold and Luke Humphreys and Casey White. And Andrew Presnell all tied for 30th. Elijah Bickle... Uh, finished tied, tied for, 37. for 37th yep so scott stokely t- uh finished tied for 39th emerson keith tied for 41st uh, scott Garrett- stokely though taking down the win at otb o- otb skins he yes. won fifteen thousand dollars yes uh, ten thousand of that or nine thousand of that was winning just for having the most skins. The rest of that was winning individual skins. And so he donated all the skins winnings to uh, Autism Research. Oh, that's awesome. I that's think it was awesome. the research. Or I did not hear that. He's big with of one of the Autism Foundations. I forget huh. which one. Um, good on him. And yeah. then he got someone ahead of time to match whatever he donated. So hopefully oh. they were prepared for him to win six thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Um, yep. But that was more money than he's won on tour so far this year. He up to this point won five hundred dollars. Hmm. So he took it down. He beat out Brody, Simon, and fourth person. I don't remember who. I cannot remember who that other person was. It Vinny. <laughs> Was it? Oh, yeah. He said he won it by throwing the best shot of his career. And the dude's <laughs> been playing since the early 90s. Mm-hmm. So to say it was his, the best shot of his career uh, was one hell of a That's shot. That's high praise. That is high praise. Um, continuing on with our rundown. Um, so that Oh, Garrett Gerthy tied for 46th, and that covers the people that made the cut. Yep. Um, 
And for those that are sitting there going, well, hang on a second. You had to have missed one of the biggest names in disc golf. No, no, we did not. Because tied for 51st, sorry, not tied for 51st, just outright 51st, yep. I believe. Maybe. Yes. Outright 51st. And missing the cut. Yes. Was. Why is this being weird? Was uh, Paul Macbeth. So obviously a very um, disappointing day for, or disappointing tournament, I think I would say for him. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, not often that you see probably the best player in the world struggling so much. He finished plus 16 over three rounds, um, which makes me feel a lot better because that sounds like something I would do. It would be worse at this course. Oh, at this course, <laughs> I would be plus 16 on the first three holes. Yes. Did you watch the Jomez hole breakdown for Jones Supreme? Uh, I did Where not. Jonathan Gomez actually broke it down. The guy who runs Jomez. Oh, He's no. like, OK, so that tree they're talking about that you want to aim at and throw just short of is 500 feet away. Now, I'm an average disc golfer. So what you're going to do is take your stable driver and throw it out of bounds. <laughs> and then you're going to try to overcorrect on the next one and throw it straight across the fairway and go out of bounds again. <laughs> then you're going to come back in and you're going to throw it into the cedar tree <laughs> and then throw four more shots and you'll be up by the basket. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's fantastic because they do the artwork. They do the whole nine yards. It's amazing. I, I'm going to have to look at that. Yes. Um, you know, going going through the rest of our group here. So we had Oh, that's that's why my thing is all messed up. I have it sorted by total score, not by position. Haha. -ha. Mm -hmm. Uh Linus Carlson tied for 52nd. Um trying to see who else. There are some notable names that missed the cut. Uh, Zach Melton tied for 68th, Chandler Fry, and Eric Oakley tied for 74th, along with Silver Lot. Silver Lot? Silver. Do, Silver we, Lot. do we have an official pronunciation on that? Lot. Lot? Yep. Like he throws a lot of discs. And then Matty O, Colton Montgomery, Philo Brathwaite, and Noah. Mainzma, all sure. DNF'd. Yeah, I know the first three. Sorry, Noah. Yeah, yeah, and and as we mentioned, Matteo and Colton Montgomery were because of COVID. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about Philo. Yeah, I did not hear about Philo until I looked at this, so I don't know what. But that is up. With explains that. why Philo wasn't commentating this round and why we were stuck with DOS, but. <laughs> I really like hey, Philo as a color commentator. Mm -hmm. He he seems interesting. He seems really oh, interesting. Yes. Um, so so as we mentioned, Ricky kind of ran away with this one. He was or he finished at ten down. Yep. Uh, Simon in second finished four down. They were two of only twelve competitors to finish even or better on the yep. men's side. It was tough. Now, well, we're used to seeing that happen occasionally with the women's side where maybe only 12, 13 will finish even or better. But on the men's side, this was I, I think that really gives a really good. I don't want to say explanation, but but really good illustration, I think, of just how tough this course was. Preview for worlds. Yes. Preview for Worlds. Um, I personally think hats off to Eric McCabe for designing this. I think we'll get into that one a little bit here, in a, you know, a little bit later. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously the big story was Ricky running away with it with his Raptor hat, which d did you see the picture of Ricky's Raptor hat? I did not. Oh, OK, that one he put on social media a few 
days, uh, I think I want to say early last week. Um, and like I said, I'm now debating getting that same print in a t-shirt that is way more expensive that I really <laughs> want to pay, but I, I, I might anyway, we'll see. If, if one of these days I show up on camera with a dino print t-shirt, you can thank Ricky Waisaki. Nice. Yes. Um, so were there any names that you guys wanted to highlight, uh, you know, from, from this MPO field or just no. talk about? That pretty much yeah. sums it up. In my yeah. uh, professional opinion, hmm. Paul Macbeth has been lucking out that his last name hasn't been causing him to constantly fail. As <laughs> in the theater world, you never say that name. That nope. play is cursed. He needs to what change name his names. That? It's the name only way he's going to get back to the top. Professional Solid. opinion. Yeah. I believe it. I, you know, 100% that makes sense logic. to me. Yeah. Yep. You Checks heard it out. here first. Paul Macbeth has was, to change his name. That's, that's my hot take. That's it. That's all yep. I got. <laughs> yep. Beast. Hot takes. He's uh <laughs> Big Beast. Okay, that's good. I like that. That's yeah. already a thing. <laughs> yeah. That's Big Beast oh, yeah. mode. Well <laughs> damn it. It's okay. You're new. We love you. Oh, I am man. new. <laughs> yes, yes. You get your uh disc golf news from us. Yes. It's funny because I get my disc golf news from Joe. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. Keeping it simple. Exactly. So, um, let's, we mentioned that this, this course was nasty. Um, both of them, you know, yes. Cause there was Jones Supreme, which was played the first two days, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And then Jones East was played day. Nope. No country club. Jones East. Yes. Jones West no longer exist. They are yes, Jones Supreme. Correct. They completely yep. redesigned it. Yep, that is correct. It is ECC, uh, which you can play on Disc Golf Valley. Yep, Emporia um, Country Club. There's yes, a lot of OB there. there and that's is, far there easier. Is. I was I was playing the uh, Disc Golf Valley version of um, Emporia Country Club. Was it windy? Uh, <laughs> not as windy as I was expecting. I think most of the holes were two and three. Yep. Uh, on the little Disc Golf Valley wind meter, um, which doesn't seem accurate. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I I did not play well because I, I did the virtual DDO um, that Disc Golf Valley was doing, and I think I finished above par. So I guess I'm in good company with the actual DDO. Yeah, I'd crowd. say so. Yeah, yeah, makes sense to me. Um, I, I went OB a lot on that. It was it was sad. It was depressing. Um, but anyway, <laughs> enough about my Disc Golf Valley adventures. So as we mentioned, Eric McCabe made the Jones Supreme layout. Um, mm -hmm. I saw on social media a lot of split opinions on this in that it was... Nice to see the pros being really, really challenged by the wind and the OB and, and everything. Yep. And I saw other people who just were like, this is awful to watch. This is, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Welcome uh, to the Internet. Yes. Yes. Uh, I thought it was funny. I was watching. I think it was the round one coverage on. Um on Joe Mez and they had a follow flight of Ricky on a forehand and you could just see where the thing just, you know, would catch the wind and stay and then, you know, jump up and down. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, that looks, mm -hmm. it's, it was just fascinating to, for me to see that. that the poor pros VFX have to deal guy. With that. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. But what, what were your guys' thoughts on this whole design on, not just the whole design, but just the course design in general. I mean, it it was made for the pros to challenge the pros, and I think it it did that. 
Um, yep. and I personally enjoyed that. Um, but on the same hand, I, I also hear, or I also, you know, see that course. And I think about it for the average disc golfer. You mentioned the breakdown that the, who was that? It was Joe Gomez. Jonathan Gomez. Jonathan Gomez. Gomez. <laughs> Gomez yeah. <laughs> um, and, and just, you know, talking about what the average disc golfer would do. Yep. I, I have my own thoughts on this. I, I'm w- currently working on an article that I think I've titled Over the River, Through the Woods, Past Grandmother's House We Throw. Um, nice. You know, based on the, the surge of pro-oriented courses. But for this mm-hmm. one, I think it was appropriate. Yeah, but I, I've talked a lot, so I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Ian, do you want to add anything? Well, I mean, overall, just looking at how everything fell out in this particular layout, it's, I, I mean, it's where the sport needs to go to be able to continue to grow professionally. Mm-hmm. If you don't have more challenging, more professionally oriented courses, then you're essentially kind of stagnate Mm -hmm. and you're just accepting that everything you're going to do is found courses or like local pro or local clubs courses, which although not a problem is really meant to cut your teeth and see if you can make it to pro and yep. then you have to grow in a new environment. That, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Um, disc golf is in a weird spot right now. We've had a huge explosion of growth from COVID and all that stuff. And we are already trending upwards. Um, the problem is the courses haven't totally caught up to where disc golf on say the media side is because they want to add and spectators and they want to add spectators and all this but the catch is the courses that were designed that challenge them like say wr jackson at most i think it's like 400 people can go in to watch the 18 holes and you can't even see all of them Mm -hmm. where they weren't allowing a lot of spectators because of restrictions i think I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on in Kansas right now, but they limited that. But being at a ball golf course and then Jones Supreme lends itself to much more spectators mm-hmm. and easier time for coverage and stuff. And I think what we're going to see more of is courses like Eagles Crossing in Missouri, where mm-hmm. it is designed with the pros in mind with disc golf media in mind with Mm -hmm. spectators in mind so that there's actual bathrooms and not porta potties around the course. And there's a real driving range and a pro shop with locker rooms and amenities like that. So wait, are you saying that they're going to have a real driving range that Brody isn't going to have to rent out the other half of, I think so so. pros have a place to drive. I think so. (laughs) I hope so. I mean, my biggest thing, I was just talking with somebody about that today. And the biggest issue is like people were getting hit with golf balls, retrieving their discs. So like it's a date that was dangerous. (laughs) Like forget everything else. It's dangerous. Someone could literally get killed. Yeah. So, um, but we're, we're kind of growing. So it's this weird spot. So everybody's complaining about like WR Jackson is great for challenging the pros and, but not great for spectators. And now we've got Joan Supreme and Emporia country club. And everybody's complaining because it's, it's too open and too hard, which like you got to pick one. Like, yeah, you can't, you know, you got spectators there. Do you want spectators or not? Like, we're we're still trying to figure this out. We're, we I weren't mean, ready. It was a steady growth, and then it was just a huge explosion, and now it's still steady. Yeah. I mean, no offense to 
spectators, but the media and media coverage and the ability to film yep. is more important than they are. Oh, you'll make so much more money. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. also in terms of growth for the sport, that's mm-hmm. the best way to get exposure to the general populace. Yeah. And one Absolutely. of the other issues they're running into right now is like you go to golf course, like a PGA course, they have miles and miles and miles of cable run everywhere. So all the cameras are hardwired. They're running around with cell phone packs on the back. And so it kind of, you know, disc golf is also limited by cellular reach for the media side, at least when you're talking live post-production, it doesn't matter. A very specific reference. Uh Oh, but do you guys remember back in like the early two thousands, the bag phones? Yep. Yeah. Those were much, much earlier than the bag phones. Oh yeah. Much earlier than the wait, what now? I, I meant the the bag phones were much earlier than the early two yeah. thousands. Early two thousands were like flip phones. 90s. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. You could get your razor. I'm, you get your yeah, razor I flip guess, phone. I guess you're right. Yeah, it's it would have been nineties. I was thinking I was older, but no, yeah, nineties is. I'm I'm just imagining disc golf camera crews running around with bag phones. Essentially, that's uh, what know, it to, is. <laughs> to to well, try and no. film things so there is a technology uh, out there that they could be utilizing they may not be they mm-hmm. may be doing some of it it's called ndi which stands for network oh goodness um yeah but this is your job here. network i guess you put device yourself on interface the spot here? or display interface yeah anyway it's made by a company called new tech but mm-hmm. it was designed to take camera feeds and be able to stream it to a receiver, either uh, wirelessly or over a, a network cable. So Cat 6E at a minimum or yeah. above. They're, so they've already talked. I forget what technology, but they described it as cellular cellular technology. It's not, but. It sounds kind of like that. Um, It depends how much it costs because they're kind of at a point where I think they're pushing the limit of the wireless no matter what they're using versus like these courses, you just can't run the cable, unfortunately. Well, no, but that's why I'm saying depending on the technologies they want to use, you could do video over IP. So Mm -hmm. even if it's not, specifically this NDI protocol, yep. you could be able to lay cable that day cheaply, securely, and it's using just, you know, basic shit. You can pick up at any of the, you know, higher end technology stores. Yep. So you really wanted to say like, Radio Shack there, didn't you? Yeah. I, I did. <laughs> I, really I don't think they're picking did. this up at, at Radio like, Shack. Radio Shack? Best Buy? No, that's not right. That's just right. <laughs> yeah. Nope, not anymore. Yeah. Fries Electronics? Oh, no. That's dead. Yeah. No, I think man. part of the problem they're also running into is a lot of these are public parks. And so laying cable, I think they're just worried about local idiots coming in and cutting a decently expensive cable. I mean, Cat 6E is not the most expensive cable you'll buy, but when you're buying it by the mile. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's it's cheaper than fiber. Yeah, but oh, it's not for sure. You know, it's not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know some so, of yeah, these words. They're, they're in a catch-22 in yeah. terms of yeah. where they're going to eventually need to be and where they are currently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But again, no offense to spectators, but they're nice, but they're kind of secondary into the considerations. It's a drop yeah. in the bucket. Yeah. I mean, but part of the part of the problem is the the tournament sells the spectator tickets and then those proceeds go towards the pro purse. So yep. 
it's one of those like eh, and now they're they're stuck because some uh some of the tournaments some tournaments are picked because of how large the purse is so yeah it's but at it's the in same a weird, time like i said it's a weird and we don't have a lot of title sponsors yet it's not like you know um i don't i'm trying to think here um Behringer presents. I'm just looking oh, yeah. at random crap on my desk right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not I've got like Behringer it's speakers. The, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not Dick's like it's sporting goods. The, yes, tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, when your when your title sponsors are Bushnell and Dynamic Discs and Innova. Yep. Um, hey, Pro Tour finale got Johnsonville Brats. Ooh. And Ooh. Nice. the PGA Champions Cup had Rectech Grills as a sponsor, not a title really? sponsor, but All right. like they're they're getting there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? I, I don't know if there's an actual answer to this, but but what? Seven. What brand? No, forty-two. Um, what brand would would you think kind of moves the needle from? Okay, they're they're starting to get some kind of nice, um, kind of lower end sponsors to. Okay, now we're starting to see some real title title sponsor sponsors. I think Whew, Johnsonville Bratz was a pretty solid one. I mean, that makes sense to me. Like that's not that said. I think they also sponsor company. like the cornhole championships and things like that. Yep. So. I was are there say, others that you would look at or I mean Under there are Armor. a million brands, so Oh, we're a long ways away from Under Armour. Yeah, well, from but the, I mean an yeah. athletic wear company. Yeah, you get like an Under Armour, Adidas, Nike, Reebok, yeah. Yeah. one of those. Puma. Wilson. <laughs> There we go. But I'll, I mean, I'll go sponsor something and uh, you know, just put Wil- you know, presented by Wilson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there won't be any copyright or trademark infringements there. Not at all. <laughs> None. Zero percent. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Makes some Microsoft sense. I mean, presents. Uh, <laughs> yes. Anyway, so uh, this, once you get there, this, though. Yeah. yeah. Dang it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this uh, this podcast is presented by RJ Wilson. <laughs> uh, you know, d- disc golf. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting mm. to see what happens. Yeah. You know, one yeah. of the other topics that has come up is, you know, if Nike or Under Armour, or someone comes in and tries to like get into the game besides just apparel, would they make their own discs? And the thought no, is they would just them. buy somebody. Because... You know, they would they would take, say, a mint discs, a decent regional, mostly mm-hmm. company and just go, we have a few money. Here's hundred million dollars. We want yeah. your company. You know, I don't know if mint. I'm just I was just trying to think of a, a yeah. big enough company, but I don't think like Latitude or Innova or Discraft would sell. No, but. No, Someone it would definitely who's, be like a mint or a thought space or yeah, that, a that lone star. Second level that's got yeah. a solid production base, solid disc selection, but mm-hmm. not the main mm-hmm. companies. Gateway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd you know, be those interesting. Ones that that have pro sponsors and have um, you know, some name recognition, but are not how the household, the, you know, the, the Walmart brands, basically. That's just Innova. <laughs> I feel they're like in, I've seen other brands there. Uh, they're mostly, they're the big ones with Dick's and Walmart. Yeah, ah, that's yep. right. I, I, I have seen though. I saw a Ricky destroyer at, um, Meyer. Right there. Ooh. That's a Ricky Destroy. Yeah. No, Is I, it from but Meyer? I saw. What? Is it from Meyer? No, it was from PB Sports. 
Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> but I have it's a Ricky Destroyer. Yeah. No. No. I was walking <laughs> through Meyer and I see see a Ricky Destroyer in like not baseline plastic, but like. Yeah, they're star never plastic. Innova's version of. Star. Um. Yeah, star plastic. I'm just like, what? Why yep. is Meyer so- selling like actual signature series discs? Because it's what they got. For, yeah. Probably cheap because they dumped all the Ricky stuff. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I I nearly picked it up. It wasn't that much. And I'm like, I, I, I almost want to pick this up. That's that's why I got that one. It was yeah. at, at PB Sports. You buy three discs, you get 10% off. Plus, that one was already 40% off. Mm nice so yes <laughs> like i got that for a fraction of what a signature disc yeah, should cost it, yeah or I mean, a tour you got series that whatever one for baseline plastic uh price basically. basically yeah it was like yeah it was like 10 or 12 bucks oh, wow. it was stupid yeah pb oh, yeah. sports uh for for those that are not from the Fort Wayne area. They do have an online selection. Yep. Just check them out. They're uh, they've got some good stuff. Yeah. And for those of you that are in the Fort Wayne slash Northeast Indiana slash Northwest Ohio, yeah, go to slash, the Michiana I Pro guess. Shop. <laughs> See, I can't find the actual shop. I know it's somewhere on the Concordia campus, but yeah, I, it's at the I, seminary. I can never actually find it. It's in the gym. Huh. See, yep. I think I just didn't want to wander into some random building, so I I just kind of checked. You didn't out want to become to a TV. priest? Uh, no, because <laughs> I'm not Lutheran. I'm not Lutheran. Neither am I. And I'm already married. Father so. Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I I had priests growing up that went by their first name, but their last name was also like eleven letters long and started with a D and a Z. So ah, uh, good Polish names. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Welcome to the Chicago land area. <laughs> yep. You're expected oh. to learn how to say that. That's why some of these yes. names on tour where I'm like, oh, I could say that. That's not a big deal. That's an easy one. <laughs> but then you get yeah. some of the Finnish names. I'm like, I got no idea. Nope. What are those? What are those things floating above all the letters? <laughs> uh, I know that when it's over a U, it's an umlaut. Sure. Uh, I know that because of Jurgen Klinsmann. Who, if you don't know soccer, probably have no idea who that is. Not a he clue. Was the, he was a really good goal scorer for Germany in the. Before I paid attention to soccer era. Uh, and hmm. then he coached the U.S. in the mid 2010s. OK. 20 teens. Uh, well. He took them to the 2014 World Cup and then got sacked before the 2018 World Cup. And then the U.S. didn't make the 2018 World Cup anyway. So. Yeah, but I'm not bitter about that at all. I was with my soccer coaches the day they lost and they were going off. It was funny because um, I know nothing about soccer. Nope. <laughs> you know, you know, um, Kevin, Kevin G, right? Yep. Good Kevin. So, yes. Good. No, he's bad, Kevin. He's bad, Kevin. Yes, he's bad, Kevin. So it's from his my- bachelor party. Yeah, okay. my bachelor party, I had two guys named Kevin and I had two guys named Brian. So there is a good Kevin and a bad Kevin and a good Brian and a bad Brian. And only one Joe, somehow. <laughs> and, nice. and one Ben. Yeah. Yeah, my my bachelor party, all all, all of my groomsmen slash uh, ushers slash DJs had really generic names. Joe, Ben, Brian. Yep. Mark, Josh. It's good yeah. times. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so he um when when that that game where the US failed to qualify, I I am in the supporters group called the American Outlaws. So I went to the American Outlaws bar to mm-hmm. watch that game and I brought him along with me. And the US it, the, the final score was two to one, and I'll I'll never forget this because I just it's etched in my brain like a terrible terrible (laughs) nightmare but 
So the U.S. was down 2 nothing, and the U.S. scored well. Bad Kevin was in the bathroom, so I told him that he had to go and, and stay in the bathroom for the rest of the game. <laughs> he did not, and the U.S. lost. So I blame Bad Kevin for the U.S. failing to qualify. That makes sense. For the World Cup in 2018. But they made it in 2022, so hey, you know, it evens Yay. out-ish. Yay. Yeah, ish. And, and they're guess. hosting in 2026, so I'm really hoping that there's some games close to me so that I can go and watch. But this has been uh, the Half in the Bag Soccer Podcast. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, I think that's a good place to end it. What do you think? I got nothing yeah. else. Yeah, I mean... We, we could BS for another hour. I mean, that seems pretty on brand for us, but uh, that doesn't seem really necessary. No, I'd say that was yeah, a good episode. Specific to bring up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, to, to recap, match play is awesome. DDO is hard. Yep. Uh, Eric McCabe nailed it with giving the pros a challenging course uh, yep. and probably making it impossible for the rest of us to play it. And uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good summary of this episode. So if you want the TLDR version, skip to about minute and or minute hour and four or five minutes, something, yeah, something like there. that. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah, all right. We, pretty much. All right. So I think I think that kind of wraps it up, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So again, if you want to watch this. Uh, and you're listening to it, you can find it at or uh, on Joe's Disc Golf. Um, wow, let me let me retry that. You can find it <laughs> on YouTube slash Joe's Disc Golf. How much Joe's Jameson YouTube have you channel. had? Um, well, the bottle is empty now. <laughs> um, in fairness, that was only two glasses. Is is this a is this an Ian and Jack situation or? Oh, or or an no, no, no. archer situation? <laughs> yeah. No, it is not an archer situation. There were there were literally only like three fingers left in the uh, bottle to begin with. So. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah. So, <laughs> as a side note, there, for those of you who are watching, my daughter has recently discovered her hands, and she's like a little stoner because she'll just put her hand up in front of her face and just open and close it. <laughs> just, she yep. just stares at it. Oh, cause and effect. Oh. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love her so much. Babies oh, are gosh. awesome. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to have one. I can a little bit. Sure you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, I, my wife and I have a cruise coming up. We can definitely wait. <laughs> yep. We, All we, right. We both well, want to be able to drink. I, um, I think yes. If you're listening and want to watch, you can find it on Joe's YouTube channel, YouTube slash Joe's Disc Golf. If you're watching and want to listen because you don't want to see our ugly faces, you can find it wherever you get your major podcasts. Submit your listener questions in Disc of the Week. Yarp. Uh, to Yarp. Uh, at Half in the Bag DG. And I think that pretty well wraps it up. So, Ian, thank you for once again joining us for all the hilarity and nonsense. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Uh, Joe? Yes? You suck. I know. Absolutely. But, Tell but me something thank you new. for everything that you do for this podcast anyway. Yeah. Mainly, Later. you know, making it a thing. Good night, everybody. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So everyone, thanks for Awkward your time. Thanks pause. for yeah. Thank, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye bye. And don't forget to enjoy bye. your round. Bye.